one of the things that, that you really have to do is you really have to make the diagnosis on the patient. You need to assess the patient, figure out what's wrong with them. Everybody wants to treat, but sometimes you have to do the diagnostic work. Everyone wants to be a therapeutic giant, and they end up being diagnostic midgets. Because sometimes we feel as we're, we're a, a, a non-mainline profession, we feel we have to justify our existence by creating spectacular results, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you are much more successful if you become a very good diagnostician. AK is a system of diagnosis. It also allows a selection of the treatment you wish to provide. Don't try to be a therapeutic giant when you're a diagnostic midget. I had a patient come to see me who had seen the best iron nose and throat in town. Iron nose throat man. She has seen the best, Dr. Will Hudson, the best chest man, internationally known as a lung physician. She had, had seen the best internist. She had a constant cough that kept her from sleeping. Cough syrup, analgesics, anodynes had no effect. And her life was a living hell because all she did was cough all the time. Very hard to suppress it. And someone had said, well, maybe Dr. Goodhart can help once in a while. There's going to be a rib out of place. And then I have, some people said, I had that. And when they fixed that, why well, I quit coughing. So when she came in with the history of having seen all the best guys in our town, I assumed at the moment that, uh, that they didn't miss anything. And she had been x-rayed. Uh, she had had all the usual tests with this constant cough. And I remembered having seen one patient that had gotten a haircut. And some of the hair had fallen into her ear. And she had some wax in her ear. And a piece of hair was actually irritating the eardrum. So I looked in her eardrums. I didn't see anything. And um, I thought to myself, why should I risk my reputation on the fact of their reputation? Patients coming to me, what would I do if I didn't know she had been to see all those guys? Maybe they missed something. So um, I did a number of things. I think I x-rayed her. Didn't find anything. And um, I decided to start at the top. And I said, open your mouth. And I looked to see if there's any uvular deviation sometimes. Uvular de deviation uh, can mean a cranial fault. Didn't see that. Um, I checked her pupil for reflex contraction to light. I'd already checked her blood pressure. I'd already done the other tests we do. And I said, well, the logical thing is uh, examine the, uh, the nose and uh, check for uh, uh, the possible turgidity uh, of the uh, turbinates and that sort of thing. And <clears throat> She was lying on a chiropractic table, lying horizontally like that. And I um, had a nasoscope and simply uh, uh, looked in the nearest nostril. Didn't see anything. I looked in the other nostril and I about jumped out of the room. Looking back at me from high up on her nasal septum was a bee whose eyes were very large. <laughs> and whose feet were out like this, and looking right at me like that, enlarged three diopters, and it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I think the other doctors missed something. <laughs> and the bee was mummified, and the other doctors had had her sitting up and had looked this way. But I had her, and I looked that way. And it was way up here. And it was mummified, and I got a needle nose uh, speculum and tried to tease the bee loose. And his feet were embedded in nasal mucus. And every time I touched the bee, she coughed. And I finally pulled out, I said, you see what you have in there? She says, oh my god. The stinger was gone. She says, you know, I remembered when this started, there was a bee buzzing around before I went to sleep. Crawled up in there and must have stung something. Crawled up in there and died. Because it was mummified. It was very dry. But um, that taught me always look 
in any orifice you can because you never know what you're going to see. 